Welcome, my dear viewers, thank you for being with my channel and watching my videos, I'm telling you a story from my life, watch this video to the end, you will understand what I'm telling you, so as not to miss my new videos. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel and leave your explanations in the comments then let's go. I've been putting up with this because of you, wanting kids, but never having them. You're defective. The hurtful words hurled at me by my husband of 20 years felt like a stab in the heart. I realized then that I couldn't go on with this man. He's already lost in thoughts of a new marriage. I believe God has been watching over us. Witnessing these devilish acts. That's why something like that happened to him. My name is Rachel, and I'm 45 years old. I work as an administrative assistant in a law firm. It's almost been 20 years since we got married. We've lived a modest life together, just the two of us. We both really wanted children. But it never happened. The problem was more on my side, and I spent years going to treatments while working, draining both my physical and financial resources. Yet without success. When I turned 40, I decided to give up. My husband wanted children until the end and urged me to continue the treatments, but I had reached my limit. Enduring pain, watching our savings dwindle. I was scared of that situation. After all, they say you need $200,000 saved for retirement. Spending more money seemed like a waste. I propose we stop the treatments and live our lives, just the two of us. Let's save up and maybe go on some luxurious trips instead of having children. I suggested this, and my husband, though hesitant, agreed. So, we decided to enjoy our life together. Yet, every time I saw children's photos on TV shows or Christmas cards, I felt a complex mix of emotions. Even five years after stopping the treatments, I still carry guilt and regret for not being able to have children. Then, one day. I decided to attend a class reunion, the first in about 10 years. My husband suggested I should take it easy and stay overnight nearby. It felt like a mini vacation. Come to think of it, since getting married, I rarely went out alone. I was always preoccupied with fertility treatments. It's okay to indulge once in a while. At the reunion, I enjoyed catching up with old friends. Rachel, long time no see. How are you? You look like you've lost some weight. Indeed, I had lost about 22 pounds in the last decade. I'm envious. Ever since I got married and had kids, I've gained about 33 pounds. Even these harmless conversations slightly stung my heart. Rachel, do you have any children? No, we couldn't have any. It's just me and my husband. Oh, I'm sorry if that was a weird question. No, it's fine. Let's have a good time. I tried to keep the atmosphere cheerful. Speaking of which, my son almost fell for a marriage scam recently. A scam? I was surprised by my classmate's words. Yeah, it was almost a fraud. She asked him for $20,000 before they even got married. What happened then? He couldn't pay $20,000, so he came to us, his parents. That's how we found out. In the end, the woman disappeared. What a scary story. There sure are some terrible women out there. Really frightening. Marriage fraud, huh? I'm a bit shocked to hear it happening so close to home. That son is now relieved to have found a new girlfriend, it seems. The reunion went smoothly and eventually came to an end. I didn't go to the after party, instead returning to my hotel and enjoying a drink alone. Oh, I forgot to contact my husband. It's still only 10 p.m., he should be awake. I called home. But no matter how much I rang, my husband didn't answer. Maybe he's already asleep. Well, I'll be home tomorrow anyway, so it's no big deal. However, I had a nagging feeling. A woman's intuition, perhaps? I just had a bad premonition. Since then, my husband started coming home extremely late on weekdays and he began to come home drunk almost every night. Hey, I'm home. Honey. You're drinking so much and coming home like this. Are you okay? My husband, in a drunken state, 
sprawled out in the living room as soon as he took off his shoes, yelling, shut up. It's the man of the house returning. Show some respect. Where in that sloppy state am I supposed to find respect? While picking up his discarded socks and shirt, I mused internally. Samantha was so cute. If only you were younger like Samantha. My husband muttered such things. Who is Samantha? What does he mean by if only you were younger? I wanted to confront him, but he was already fast asleep. Could he be cheating on me? The unease I felt that day was turning into a strong suspicion. No, my husband is a principled man. He couldn't possibly do such a thing. It must be just drunk talk. I kept reassuring myself. But even on weekends, he would leave early in the morning and come back late at night. I'm heading out for a bit. Take care. And, as usual, he returned drunk. When this became a weekly occurrence, even I had to speak up. You've been drinking almost every day recently. Are you sure about the money? Shut up. It's my money. I can do what I want with it. It's from my savings before we got married. But we need to save for our retirement, or we'll be in trouble later. You save up then. I used a lot for the treatments. That's because you were defective. Even if he was drunk, such words were hurtful. I started to notice the change in my husband. Was it because I became self-deprecating after stopping the treatments? He increasingly made belittling comments about me. If you can't have kids, at least show me more love. As he wasted money and acted selfishly, I felt my love for him dwindling. He used to be so kind and supportive during the tough times of the treatments. I wonder if that husband will ever come back. What exactly is marriage? After 20 years, I've started to ponder this question. But then, things suddenly took a turn. Rachel, we need to talk. When I got back from work, my husband was sitting on the living room sofa with a serious look on his face. What's going on? You're being so formal. I want a divorce. What? Are you joking? Why are you saying this all of a sudden? I never dreamed that my husband was considering divorce. I knew we needed to rethink our relationship, but I never thought about divorce. Could he have been considering it before me? Why divorce all of a sudden? I demanded an explanation. We've been married for 20 years, right? Let's discuss things properly. But he looked at me with contempt. You really are clueless. He sighed heavily and glared at me. What do you mean? For these 20 years, I've always wanted kids. Because of a defective person like you, I was robbed of the chance to become a parent. Have you ever considered how I felt? He said arrogantly, tapping the table. But we decided to stop the treatments together. I was never okay with it. I've always wanted children. Why didn't he talk to me about it? I felt so sad and frustrated that I was on the verge of tears. Look, just fill in the divorce papers quietly, and I won't say anything more. He pushed the divorce papers across the table to me. I've already decided to remarry. Remarry? Yes, with a 20-year-old girlfriend. Girlfriend? What do you mean? Have you been cheating? Of course not. I'll register our marriage right after our divorce. He said proudly. A 20-year-old marrying my husband? Unbelievable. Samantha is kind, cute, and the ideal wife, unlike you. Samantha. The name he mentioned that day. A woman's intuition isn't something to be underestimated. I was a little impressed with myself. But this was no time for self-congratulation. And then, he showed me a photo of the cute Samantha. I almost burst out laughing when I saw it. Seriously? I couldn't believe this was happening. What's wrong? He noticed something was off with me. But I quickly regained my composure. I felt it was too early to reveal what I knew, so I put on a solemn face. So, you really wanted children that much, huh? Yes, I did. Since you couldn't have any, it couldn't be helped, right? You'll agree to the divorce, won't you? I guess it can't be helped. 
I exaggerated a sad expression. I was indeed sad when he first mentioned divorce. But his utter foolishness made me think that divorcing him might actually be the right decision. Yes, it's better to part ways with such a person sooner. Feeling like even God was suggesting this, I filled in the divorce papers and left him. He'll probably regret it soon enough. Well, I'll just watch from a distance for a while. About a year after the divorce. Rachel, please, help me. On my way home from work, a shabby man approached me. Excuse me, who are you? I genuinely didn't recognize him and was confused. It's me. Rachel, I need your help. It was my ex-husband. Technically a stranger now, since we're no longer married. It's been a while. I couldn't hide my surprise at his changed appearance. He was gaunt and dressed in filthy clothes. Please, introduce me to one of your firm's lawyers. I can't just do that all of a sudden. It turned out he was in financial trouble, with no money left. I guessed as much from his appearance, but I didn't expect him to become a completely different person in just a year. The initial consultation is free. Free? But hiring a lawyer will cost you. I don't have that kind of money. Please, help me. What happened? Reluctantly, I agreed to hear his story over coffee at a nearby cafe. Actually. Before he could start, I spoke up. Did Samantha run away from you? How did you know that? Just as I thought. When he showed me Samantha's photo, I immediately recognized her. At the class reunion, a classmate's son had been deceived by a woman who looked just like her. At the reunion, my classmate was saying, I can't forgive this woman, and was showing her picture to everyone, warning them about her. I remembered her name being something like Amy, and she was supposedly 22. Well, those details were probably fake. It makes sense. Scammers don't use their real names. You knew about Samantha? Well, I knew something. So, what happened? He told me the whole story. He met Samantha at a club about a year ago. Desperate for children, he kept talking about it. Samantha then offered, I can have your child. They gradually grew closer. My ex-husband frequented the club almost every weekday and went on dates outside the club on weekends, eventually heading back to the club. During this lifestyle, he managed to spend $7,000 from his savings he had accumulated before we got married. She was always nice, you know. On our dates outside, she never asked for expensive things. She was happy as long as I was drinking at the club with her. She was different from those malicious hostesses you hear about. She didn't need branded goods or jewelry, just wanted me to drink at the club. She seemed like a hardworking, sincere girl. Since we agreed not to touch each other's savings from before our marriage, I had no idea about this. Well, it was his money, and he was free to spend it, but I never thought he would use up such a large amount. Then Samantha revealed her true colors. I want to get married, but I have some debt. I need to pay it off. It's about $20,000. And my ex-husband agreed to pay off her debt and transferred the money to her. They started living together immediately after our divorce, but Samantha worked nights. She seldom came home, I was told. Then she quit her job and disappeared. Of course, she took all the money with her. How foolish can he be? I felt embarrassed that I had been married to such a person for 20 years. Do you have a loan agreement? A loan agreement? When I asked, he just looked puzzled. You lent her money, right? Didn't you make a contract? We were going to be married, so no, we didn't make one. Then it's like you gave her the money, isn't it? Is it? In this case, it's considered that you gave Samantha $20,000 out of goodwill. She must be quite skilled at manipulation. With gifts, if the annual amount exceeds $10,000, gift tax applies. In some cases, received gifts can be taxed, so Samantha cleverly took only $20,000 in cash and disappeared. Moreover, she split the amount over two occasions within a year, crossing into a new year. This way, she didn't exceed the annual gift limit of $10,000 and avoided paying taxes. 
My ex-husband thought she was a good girl because she never demanded gifts, but it was because she knew the law well. What should I do now? Well, you could consult a lawyer. But it will cost you. He looked completely dejected. I've used up my savings, and the woman I loved ran away. I can't even tell my colleagues at work that the marriage is off. Especially after bragging about getting a young wife. That's what he gets for his actions. I thought, but didn't say anything, seeing how pitiful he looked. Rachel, I was wrong. Please come back to me. I realize now that you were the only one who cared about me. I don't need kids anymore. I'll let you do as you like. You must have been lonely too, right? Does he still think I have feelings for him? For me, it ended six months ago. So, I confronted him with reality. What are you talking about after a whole year? Isn't this a bit too convenient for you? But, Rachel, are you going to abandon me? Weren't you the one who pushed for a divorce? Rachel, you're the only one I can rely on. He looked exhausted. I decided to show a bit of compassion. All right. Shall I call a lawyer I know? Rachel, thank you. You still care about me. He was moved to tears. Then Andrew, a lawyer from my company, arrived at the cafe. Andrew, over here. Rachel, who is this? He's an acquaintance who seems to be in trouble. Is that so? Nice to meet you, I'm Andrew. My ex-husband looked puzzled at our seemingly close relationship. We've been dating for the past six months. So, what was the consultation about again? As I said that, my ex-husband seemed to be in a daze. No, uh. I think that's enough for today. Suddenly coming to his senses, he quickly left as if he was escaping. Eventually, my ex-husband couldn't afford a lawyer and had to accept his loss. At his company, rumors spread that he was dumped by his fiancé and even his ex-wife wouldn't help him. It's a small world indeed. I never imagined someone from my ex-husband's company would be at that cafe, listening to our entire conversation from start to finish. I heard through the grapevine that, fearing a lonely old age, he's now desperately trying to find a new partner. What was that all about? Andrew asked me later, and I explained everything to him. I'm sorry for the trouble. Actually. That's quite a story. You've had a tough time, Rachel. The story about me dating Andrew was a complete fabrication. I asked him to play along as a favor. I'm really sorry for all the trouble. It's okay, I'm glad I could help. By the way, do you have plans after this? Eh? Would you like to have dinner together? I never expected such a turn of events and was flustered. A fresh start in my mid-forties. Not a bad beginning at all. Yes, I'd love to. I was filled with a sense of anticipation, believing that a fun and exciting future lay ahead. This unwavering feeling made me look forward to what's coming next.